So what's up? We're here with ESG at Great American Music Hall in San Francisco. Um, we're doing a show here tonight with ESG, Naked Roommate, and Telepathic Children. Um, this is Renee. Would you like to introduce yourselves? I'm Christina. I'm Scarlett. I'm Renee. I'm Nicholas. And I'm Nicole. Thank you so much for being here with us. We're so excited to have you in San Francisco. Um, tell us a little bit about how you've been feeling. Well, I was okay until I had an incident coming into San Francisco, but other than that, I'm good. We had a little incident, a little ankle bruise incident, but we're good now. We're good. Are you looking forward to the show? I sure am. Well, I wanted to ask you a few questions just going back to like your upbringing, your childhood, where it all started. Um, so you guys grew up in the South Bronx and you started making music together as a family, right? How was that? How did it all come about? How did you start playing music together? Okay, well. I did with my sisters. This is my daughter, Nicole, and this is my son, Nicholas. So this is second generation. Mm -hmm. But me and my sisters grew up in the South Bronx. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, actually, it was me and my sister, Valerie, who said, let's make a band. So, you know, we got together and made a band. And then I had a sister, Marie, and another sister, we do it again. And, you know, they would just, yeah. But, but me and Valerie, we, we hung up for a long time. And, uh, you know, basically, we made a band. We didn't really think nothing of it other than we were going to, you know, go out, play a couple of clubs, make a couple of dollars, and that was it. And, you know, it, it, it it's turned into a, a institution. I mean, this is it's 43 years in. We're still here. It's incredible. That's absolutely amazing. And to keep it going with the family tradition, too, I want to ask you two, what's it been like growing up in this world and being a part of this? Uh, the funny thing is, was, um, as she says, 43 years. I'm 39 years old, so I consider ESG an older sibling <laughs> that kind of always been there. I mean, realistically, I've been kicking beats since the womb. <laughs> and um, when she used to rehearse, right when I was like three, four or five years old, I would just sleep on the amps. And they would be concerned because the bass and drums are pumping. And this is comforting sounds to me and even so it's still comforting sounds now when i hear my mother sing songs that are a little risque i usually give her a little side look like okay mom that's a little too much <laughs> but you know i always tell people you know a lot of families go on um, you know play you know board games they have little reading moments and quite much. we have the music we have the travel this has been like our family moment. And I enjoy it immensely to say to spend about over 20 years doing this. I can't think of a better way to spend it with my mother and my brother. Well, my sister basically took the words out of my mouth, but I've been here uh, for 10 years now. And the funny thing is my mom, she needed a replacement. And she's like, son, I need a percussionist. And I was just literally thrown in. I'm like, You're up. okay. I'm like, You're what? Yeah. Got to the first show. Made it out, little front bumps and bruises, but it got so much better along the way. And again, I love playing with my family. It's just, it is no better words to describe it. I enjoy it. Well, you were initiated like I was because that's exactly how I got thrown on the bass. Um, I was just playing with their keyboard. They had little keyboards back in the, what, the 80s, 90s. I was just playing. And she goes, Nicole. I'm like, oh crap, I'm in trouble. And uh, she's like, here's a bass. I'm like, so what? <laughs> You're gonna play it. I can't play it. Yes, you can. You're my blood. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I told her <laughs> if she can. I told her if she can play the keyboard, she can play the bass. So here we are. Yeah. <laughs> that encouragement. <laughs> so what was the music community like when you were growing up in New York, and what's the community for you guys been like now in this next generation? Okay. Well, when I was first playing in. The the early 80s it, it it was like it is in a festival today thus you would have all kinds of people in the lineup uh we played with uh, uh punk rock bands we played with rappers and all of this would be on one uh uh bill. bill for the evening yes and uh you know the only way you see uh different things like that now is in festivals yeah. You know, but I enjoyed playing the festivals. Yeah, ESG has played some festivals, oh, right? Yes, yes. So do you have, you've had such a legendary career. What are some of your highlights, the favorite places that you played or maybe events? 
okay, well, one of my favorite places is no longer around was the Paradise Garage in New York City. And uh, it was like, it was a, wow, that's all I can say. It was wow. But the one thing I loved about the people at the Paradise Garage, they had a lot of tape acts coming in during the 80s. So what it was, when ESG came to perform, they would rent us all the equipment to play live. So I always had great respect for the Paradise Garage and they respect our music. And we had to play the last two opening nights. And I said, had to, I mean, you had to be there and it was sad. It was Right before it closed? We played the last two nights. Wow. So, yeah, and uh, the closing party. Wow. And yeah, we were on the bill and, you know, it was, wow. That's what a I way said. to close yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was funky. Hey. Keeping it funky always. Yes, yes. What about the music that you enjoyed growing up? Uh, well, the music I enjoyed growing up was James Brown, Queen, a uh, variety. Mother played a variety of music. Didn't start, don't stick to one genre. Listen to all genres. And that moment, of course, ESG as well. Because, <laughs> but So listen to various types of music. And I love listening to various types of music. It helps me play an ESG. Actually, my mother helped me develop about my own style. I'm uh, going as an independent artist named NDN. Tell us about it. Well, okay. I'm um, doing a style I call it Techno Funk Soul. And I've uh, made an album, a small thing called The Experience. Good, bad, whatever. It's an experience. So <laughs> I. So, like the James Brown experience. Exactly. So again, I. Uh, I have had the CDs, I've sold it online, and it's the first step. I have more coming to wait. So, looking forward to it. Love it. Out for it. <laughs> well, yeah. The one thing, ESG would have not existed without my mother. Okay. Uh, when we were living in the projects in the Bronx in the 70s during the bad times, the drug times, when the South Bronx looked like a war zone, my mother said she didn't want us hanging out in the streets because there was so much you know, going on. So she scraped and she was just a clerk and and her and my dad were separated and she went out there on her her clerk salary and she got us those instruments to, to stay in and you know, so we went out there doing bad things. I, I read maybe just a few bad things. Just a little bit of trouble. <laughs> I read about that online that your mom was the one who gifted you the instruments that yes. got it all started. Yes. Yes. Wow. So, in her honor. Yes, yeah, so without my mom, yes, she would have never existed. I, I mean, you know, is it another thing that I'll never forget? This is when I met uh, Ed Bowman and Nine Nine Records. It was a, a talent show, and I didn't want to go in because I saw all these kids out there, and they had all the, the electronic music of the 80s. And, you know, my mother, she says, come, come, come. <laughs> she goes on the car window. She said, I drove you all the way down here. <laughs> She said, from the damn Bronx, she said, you're going to get your band, you're going to take yourself, you're going to drag yourself in there, you're going to play, you understand? I said, okay, Mom. All right, Mama. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's that's the truth. And that's how we met Ed, and then he liked our style, and he started booking us unofficially, and that was the beginning of VSG, you know, playing out and, you know, punk rock, new wave club. It was, it was interesting in the 80s. It was an interesting time. Is that how you got linked up with Factory Records to go out to England? Well, actually, okay, we were playing the show. We were opening for a band called Certain Ratio. And Tony Wilson, uh, he was there, and he heard a sound check. And he came up to me and he said, hey, how would you like to make a record? And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, like, hey. And that was Wednesday. And Saturday, we were in the studio. And we recorded with what is now, you know, the three-song mm -hmm. EP mm -hmm. that, yep. that, you know. That did it all. Yeah, yeah. you know, good moody and UFO. Yeah. Amazing. Y'all are such an essential, incredible band. And you've been around and seen so many incredible musicians happen. What are some of your favorite musical things that are happening right now? Do you have any favorite modern musicians? Okay, I, I let's see. Um, let me see. I, I can't say. I, I mean, I listen to a, a lot of, of various artists. I mean, that was interesting. I'm really a fan of Megan Thee Stallion. Yes! <laughs> Hot girl shit! <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, it was so funny because I introduced my kids yes. to Megan Thee Stallion. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, Jimmy Kimmel was the first time I saw her and I was like, Oh, who is this woman and how amazing. Amazing. That yes. So 
the <laughs> Megan the Stallion. She introduced. Uh, she introduced a lot. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, we saw uh, Dia Lupa. Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Yeah. God, I apologize for that, but I love that song. What hot damn! I'm never fall in love again. I love that song. So uh, again, so they're good artists out here, and I'm glad that it started because music was a little stale over the last few, but during certain times, it's starting to get up again. So okay, I, I really do like Dua Lipa. I, I listen, yeah, to a lot of her stuff. So yeah. Amazing. Well, I think that we've got to wrap things up, but thank you so much for chatting with thank us. You. Thank you. It is like to be on Psyched Radio. <laughs> Hell yeah, Psyched to be on Psyched. It, it is a true honor to get to sit here and talk with you and to be able to watch your performance later. The sound check was righteous. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for everything. Um, I'm Christina. I'm Scarlett. And that was a Psyched Radio SF interview with ESG. Yes, Thanks for tuning in. Hey. <laughs>